Welcome back to another edition of Five Questions with the Paulists, and I'm Mike Hayes, and today we're being joined by Heather McClory, who is all the way up in Toronto, and uh, Heather is a Paulist associate. And so, Heather, let's get right into it. Question one, what's a Paulist associate? Hi, Mike. Um, a Paulist associate, as I see it, is someone who is attracted to the attitude of the Paulists. The, and essentially, it's an attitude of openness. Um, openness to people who are different or people who question. Mm. Uh, openness to new people who are interested in the Catholic Church and in a thinking, questioning way. Um, openness to, um, under, to people who question and understanding and sharing that questioning. Also, it's an openness to knowing that as a church, as a people of God, we can always do better. Mm. Yes, we can indeed, right? Yeah. And, and so what's your question too, is what's, what's your favorite part about being a Paul's associate all these years? It's the people. Mm. The people here at my parish, St. Peter's in Toronto, St. Peter's was served by the Paulists for over 102 years. Mm. And they had to leave Toronto about six years ago. Uh, we continue our Paulist Associates group here. Our, our new pastor, Father McGorty, he was a, a diocesan priest, is, um, you know, he, he's, he's okay. He's, he's positive towards the Paulist Associates continuing. So we do. And... Um, the people who I meet with as associates in Toronto are a great support to me, and it gives me an opportunity to support my fellow parishioners and get to know them even better. And I really, really enjoy that mutual support and understanding here at St. Peter's and, of course, elsewhere, right? Um, it's the Paulist priests who I know so many of now. I guess I know most of the Paulists or have met yeah. all of them. And that is a great gift to me because really they're, they're good people. And Paulist associates from other places. I have a lot of friends now um, who are Paulist associates um, in Boston, uh, Tampa, Grand Rapids, Michigan, these are all great people. Yeah, as we say, when we we go across the country and the countries, in our case, yes. to to go and uh, to meet some of the Paulists, we always say it's the Hecker tour. You know, where to go yeah. on the Hecker tour this year? Yeah, cool. Uh, and so, a place I've been on the Hecker tour is your own city of Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Question yeah. three is: Can you tell me what Toronto is like right now? Well. Uh, Right now, the number one concern, the big deal is COVID-19 pandemic. And um, it's, been, it's been this way for two and a half, going on three months now. We're very uh, concerned. Um, we're disturbed. And we're trying to pull together in this while realizing that um, everybody's in the same storm. I think I saw this on the internet. We're all in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat in that storm. Uh. Because the, um, the burden of this, the suffering of this, is not being spread evenly throughout the economic social levels of society. The people who are suffering the most from this, and in terms of how many have come down with this COVID-19 or have died for it, the people who are suffering the most are the frail elderly and essentially working people who are in jobs that they can't do at home. They're in jobs which serve the public. 
whether it's the patients or just the public in general. Um, it's been personally to me, it's been very, very difficult to see obviously how many of our elders are suffering and dying from this and in particular elders who are living in nursing homes and also the people who serve them the most personal support workers who aren't have not been given the right protection and have come down sick as well and these are people who are paid the least and do the most difficult and even nastiest jobs at times. So that's been a great concern. And so throughout these three months uh, that you've been sort of sheltering in place there in Toronto, yeah. can, can, you, yeah. can you tell me what, what's been your favorite quarantine food at this point? What's, what's <laughs> brought you some comfort? Okay, there are times when I just, I just love to um, order in. So, I mean, the, the thing that I've ordered in and enjoyed the most has been pizza, mm. which is a very simple food, but I don't eat it that often. So I, you know, I order from a, a company that's been around here in Toronto for many years. It's a fairly large company and their pizzas are great. Nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> and, and so our final question, question five, um, when all this starts to open up again and, and we're able to go back to, to church as we know it, uh, what do you think the big challenges for parishes are going to be as they start to reopen? Well, for myself personally, I think the biggest challenge will be, I mean, I'm, I can't wait to worship and receive Christ amongst my friends. Okay. Um, our parish has been very good. Father McGordy has been keeping in touch with people, calling us on the phone. Father McGordy, Sister Gabriel Riddle, they've really been pulling us together. The Paulists have been very good. I've been, you know, I went to Mass in Knoxville, Tennessee <laughs> two days ago. Um, yeah. And and those uh, live stream Masses are great. <clears throat> it's being able to worship and receive God amongst my friends. And for me, it will be a challenge when we finally get together not to run up and hug everybody. Because even then, we're going to have to kind of hold it back a bit. So that will be a personal challenge to me. And I'll have to put my hands behind my back. I don't know. Um, but for the parish and for the church in general, I mean, you can, <clears throat> you can um, organize anything physically right you can give people instructions walk this way walk that way but i think our biggest challenge will be at communion you know i don't know how many people are going to show up i have a feeling it will be a good number so getting everybody to receive christ will be safely will be a challenge um the one thing you know every 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 difficulty has a kind of upside if we weren't reverent if we weren't realizing and appreciating the eucharist before i think once we all get back to mass together we will certainly be appreciating it all the more yeah 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 that's it seems to be the case here too. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to someone the other day and I said, you know, we, we had all, to, all we had to do whenever we had a special mass with large numbers of people to get them to yeah. all walk in the same straight line in the procession, never mind oh, yeah. with oh, yeah. all this other stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. I think this is going to be a big challenge. Uh, you know, never mind the fact that keeping places clean and, and everything oh, yeah. else. You yeah. Know. yeah. I think we'll have plenty of uh, volunteers for cleaning the church after mass. Uh, but um, yeah, how do you bring people up to receive Christ in a safe way without turning it into a drill movement? Right. You know, right. you don't want to boss people up to communion. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. But yeah. uh, I'm glad things are going well up in Toronto for you. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, thanks so much for all that you've done for the Paulist Associates all these years. It's uh, it's it's been really great getting to know you a little bit and uh, to to see all the work that the Paulist Associates do as they continue to to dedicate their um, yeah themselves really to uh, to the workings of Isaac Hecker. Thank you, Mike. And so this has been Five Questions with the Paulist Fathers. I'm Mike Hayes, and we will see you again at another time. <laughs>